Henry Youngman, a comedian from the 30s and 40s, once joked, There was a girl knocking on my hotel room door all night. Finally, I let her out. And when I read that quote, I began thinking that's where we're at with crime in America this year. We are standing at the doorstep of a crime crisis like we've never seen before. And I'm not going to say that we're knocking on the door, because we already knocked. We're just waiting for someone to answer. Now, every time I talk about crime and say that it's worse now than it's ever been, somebody will always respond in the comments and say something like, well, it's not that bad now because it was worse in the 90s. Which, I, I, I was alive during the 90s, and I don't remember it being very bad, but I was young enough that I probably wasn't paying attention to crime. But I know that in the entirety of the 90s, there were only 53 mass shootings. All of the 90s, 53 mass shootings. We had 53 by February 1st this year. An entire decade's worth of mass shootings we had in one month and one day. So if you want to argue with me that it was worse in the 90s than it is now, I will debate that with you because there is no way it's even close. An entire decade of mass shootings in a month and a day. And if you still want to argue that with me, all I have to say is 29. 29. That is the number of days this year that have not had a mass shooting. Not how many that have had one, but have not had a mass shooting. 29 days. This is the end of April. We're a third of the way through the year, and there have only been 29 days that there has not been a mass shooting anywhere in America. There's been 173 of them. And we're at day about 114, I think, somewhere around that in the year. One person getting shot is one thing. Mass shootings for the most part, our majority random people are getting shot. You have the incidents where you have like a father that ends up killing their whole family and then killing himself, those types of mass shootings. And those are more targeted. But a lot of these mass shootings are just people pulling up and firing upon crowds of people, many of which they have no idea who they are which in my mind makes where we are at worse now than we even came close to in the 90s because random people are being killed for no reason. And it's, this is everywhere. People might say, oh, yeah, well, that's just happening in Chicago or, oh, that's just gang shootings or, oh, that's this and that. And you can come up with any excuse you want in your head. But it's not just Chicago. Chicago this year, they've only had four. Four. Memphis and Philly have both had six. They're more. New Orleans is more. Baltimore is more. Yeah, Chicago has had four. Two years ago, Chicago had 60. Last year, they had 44. By far, Chicago historically has the most, as they have the most homicides. But it's happening everywhere. It's not just Chicago. So if you're using, oh, it's just Chicago, I hear all this stuff, it's just Chicago, you're fooling yourself. Because it's happening in small towns. There was just one the other day, Jasper, Texas. Population 8,000. That's a small community. They shouldn't be having mass shootings in small communities. 
But, you know, people were having fun at a party and someone decided they wanted to shoot up the place because maybe they weren't having as much fun as they thought it would be. So it's bad everywhere. And the thing with the, with the mass shootings, well, with any shooting, actually, is most often it's not the person that's the intended target that gets killed or injured. I don't know how many stories I've done about two guys that are in a shootout with each other. They fire off 15, 20 rounds between the two of them. They don't hit each other. All those shots, they're shooting at each other, and neither of them gets hit by a bullet. But some baby in a car seat, two blocks away, sitting at the bank with its mom, gets shot in the head and dies. Those kind of stories happen all the time. where the bullet is not intended for that person, but it finds its way to somebody who just happens to be in the line of fire. But the people that are actually shooting at each other don't even come close to hitting the person they're aiming at. That's what makes this worse. If they were hitting the people they were... I, I actually did a story just last week, I think, where the two guys got in a shootout and they actually both killed each other. That's the first time I've come across that, where two guys got in a shootout and they killed each other. Because normally, one, at best, one will die and the other one gets thrown in prison. At worst, neither of them gets hit, but some random person a few blocks away gets struck, crossing the street sitting in their car, sitting in their house, watching TV. Places where you'd think you'd be safe. The bullet keeps going until it hits something. And I've said, I used to say it at the end of all of my videos that a bullet can travel over a mile unimpeded. Over a mile. So if you think about where you live, think about where the closest dangerous area is. Think about where you drive. Where is the closest dangerous area to where you drive, where you live, where you go to the grocery store, where your bank is, where your kid's school is? Where is the closest area to that? Are you within a mile of that? Because if you are, you're in dodging strays area. And that's because of these mass shootings and these people firing indiscriminately at things that they can't hit. We have cities now that have all but made stealing legal. You have the West Coast where as long as it's under $950, they're not going to do anything about it. And you have like New York and Chicago, that basically they're not charging people for stealing anymore. Chicago's losing a ton of businesses. Because the, you can't run a business if people are stealing. But the thing about this is everybody knows. I do not live on the West Coast. I do not live in Chicago. And I do not live in New York. But I know that if I went to those places... I could steal as much as I wanted and they would let me walk right out the door and nobody would do anything to me. The people that live in these cities know they could go into the, any of those stores, take whatever they want and walk out and nothing will happen to them. But if you, if you look at it, it's a small group of people that are going in and, and stealing. Everybody there knows that they can do it. Everyone. They all know it. They've all, they've all been in the store, seen somebody walking out with armloads of stuff or just pushing their cart out filled with everything and not paying for it 
Everybody's seen this happen. So everybody knows that they could go to these places and they could do it. Yet not everybody does do it. It's still just that small group of people. Because the majority of people are good people. They're not going to go steal, even if they can. Because they know it's wrong. So when they make this law, which is basically the freedom to steal law or whatever they want to call it, they're making it for this small group of people that they know will actually go do that. And those same people, when you let them go on stuff like stealing, that negative behavior escalates. And eventually it's going to escalate to murder if they're not stopped. Because you're going to keep going to the next crime, to the next crime, the next bigger crime. And until they actually end up in prison, those crimes are going to keep escalating. Because it's not everyone that is doing this. They allow it, but it's not everyone that's doing it. And it's a small group of people that you can't talk about. Because you'll get yourself in trouble if you talk about them. And when you can't be honest about something, you can't ever come to a solution to it. And I said in a video, I don't know, just a few weeks back, that I think it's all by design. I think they want it like this. I think there's a group of people that they don't care, and by they I mean the people in charge, that they don't care what happens to them. So they let all this stuff out. They let the murderers back out on the street because they know that murderer, by the time his court date comes, he's going to go out and he's going to murder a few more people. And I don't think they care. I think they're just fine with that, letting people go out and kill certain groups of people. Now, if they were coming to their neighborhoods, they'd put a stop to it. But because they're not... I believe it, they literally, they don't care, and they're letting it happen on purpose. I honestly believe that. They've said for years, and by years I mean years, that 50% of the homicides are committed by people that are black. That 13% of the population commits 50% of the homicides. I would actually argue that that number is nowhere near correct. I would argue that it's closer to 80%. In Chicago, the victims are 79% black. And if people kill their own race, you have to assume that 79% of the killers are black. But a lot of the white people that are killed are killed by someone that's black. And the numbers of Hispanics is actually growing. But that's because the Hispanic population in our country is growing. So that number going up kind of makes more sense. But the demographic of black people is going down. The last census, it went from 13,000 down to 12,000. I think it was like, or from 13% down to 12%. I think it was like 12.5%. But there was an actual decline in population. But if you encourage them not to have children and you encourage them to basically, I mean, you're giving them almost permission to go out and kill each other. What do you think is going to happen to their population? When you're getting rid of, I just did a video on Milwaukee and 55% of the homicide victims are under the age of 29. So that's 55% of them that will never grow up and have kids. I mean, some of the ones in their 20s or even the late teens probably already have kids. But they're not repopulating if they're dying young. Again, by design. Last year, I, there, there were two cities last year that I was the most concerned about. 
going the wrong direction. And that was Portland and Minneapolis. And of the two, I thought for sure it would be Minneapolis that would be the worst. I thought, and I even did videos last summer about how I thought Minneapolis was ready to explode. And I followed them last summer very closely because I, in my mind, it was just a matter of time. But this year, Portland's the one that's been much worse than Minneapolis, as far as homicides go anyway. Portland's been bad. Portland is no longer a safe city. That used to be a really nice city. And it is not anymore. But Minneapolis, I don't, I don't trust the numbers that come off of their, you know, I, I got the government web, website pulled up and I look at it. And the homicide numbers never really go up. But you know there's homicides there. But the number doesn't go up on their, their web page. So I don't trust the numbers that come out of Minneapolis. And I was actually just, I worked in Minneapolis last, last week or the week before. And from last year, even from, I was there in January. I filmed a video while I was there in January. And granted, there was snow on the ground. But just since then, I noticed, well, the snow was hiding probably all the garbage. There is garbage everywhere. There is gar This is like a very dirty city. And that is a city that does not care. If they don't clean up the garbage, that's, and you drive down the, down the freeways, there is graffiti everywhere. And I mean everywhere. And the spots that there isn't graffiti, it's because somebody took a roller, paint roller, and painted over it. And then you can see like you'll see a patch of of something that was painted over and you can see there must have been something else on top of it and it was painted over again because the big patches that are painted over are multi multiple different colors. They're not even the same colors. So it, the graffiti has been painted over multiple times, but it literally, it's everywhere. I bet you don't go a minute without seeing fresh graffiti somewhere. Entire sides of buildings as you drive down streets, just regular businesses, have graffiti all over them. And this is in a, a, a lot of the city. This isn't just one bad area. These are actually areas that you probably wouldn't look at and say, oh, that's a bad area. Like if you looked at the statistics, you'd be like, that's not a bad area. But that's not a good sign. Garbage everywhere and graffiti everywhere. That is a sign of a declining city. And Minneapolis, I think, I think there are 15 homicides right now. It might be 16. But I guarantee you they've had more than that. They're just not putting them on there. Because either that or they locked up a couple of people and they're just waiting for the next crop of youngins to come up and start with the murdering people. Because if you look at that city, it's disgusting. It is literally a disgusting city. And I've been there many times before. And it's was, pre the summer of Floyd, a beautiful city. And I'm still waiting for that city to explode. There's going to be one day that it suddenly, it's as bad as Milwaukee. It's as bad as Chicago. And they're literally going back to the knocking on the door. They already knocked. They're waiting for that door to, to open. And when it does, they're not going to do anything about it. Because nobody that runs that city cares. They don't care that it's like that. Their homeless crisis had gotten out of control there over the winter. And it gets down at below zero in Minnesota. And they had gone through at one point, I watched a press conference on it about the homeless people, and they were clearing out this huge homeless camp somewhere. And it was, it was huge. Like, they showed it. It was huge for being as cold as it was, all those people wanting to live outside. And so the city came through, and they thought they were going to be good. And they said, look, we're going to put all you guys up in this, like, housing unit somewhere. And none of these people that were homeless 
wanted to go to that housing unit. They told them they're going to come through. They're going to clean out all those tents and they better get out by whatever day. None of those people wanted to go to the free housing unit and get free food, stay warm. None of them wanted that. They wanted to live in those tents in below zero temperatures. I don't know what makes somebody want to do that. But that's another thing that shows a decline of a city. Because that's what happened and that's what's destroyed Los Angeles, which is a city I lived in for a long time. It was, when I lived there, a beautiful city. It was before, I left not long before all this stuff started going bad. But it was a beautiful city. You couldn't pay me to go back there now. It's horrible. But it was, when you allow the homeless to live on the streets like that, and you're not getting them off the streets, it destroys the city. The city, it declines naturally because there's nowhere else for it to go but down. That's where Minneapolis is right now. I haven't been to Portland in a long time. A long time. But I remember it was a beautiful city. And everything that I see about it now, is, it's just, it's gone downhill. And they're letting it. And this is the problem we have. And I don't know, I don't see it stopping. Because we're, we're electing all these people that want it like this. So we've already knocked on this door. And we're just waiting to see what's on the other side. And it's not going to be good. And what anybody wants to say about the 90s, I honestly, like I said, I was alive, but I don't, I wasn't old enough to be really paying any attention to any of that stuff. I didn't care about any of that. But I don't remember ever being afraid in the 90s. But... We're, we're headed, if, if you look at just mass shootings, which is something that I focus a lot on, because nobody else seems to, and because that's, that's something big. These things should not happen. If you look at just that, you see where this country is going. Our record was set at 690 mass shootings in one year. That was just a couple years ago it was set. We're ahead of that pace right now. We're ahead of the pace of where we were last year. We're ahead by a couple weeks. Last week wasn't a, or last year wasn't a record year, but it was up there. It was over 600. That's a lot. Anyway, let me know what you think about this. We're knocking at that door. I don't even want to see what's on the other side. But if they don't do something soon to stop it, we're all going to find out.